Well, we've been learning about revelation knowledge. So let's get back into the Word today. Y'all ready? Let's go to, uh, what, what is it, Matthew chapter 16? And I want to look at verse 17, Matthew 16, 17. That's going to be our, our key scripture that we're jumping off of. Amen? Amen? Praise God. The Lord is good. Now, leading up to this is uh, when Jesus comes to the region of Caesarea Philippi, if you read it from, from verse 13, he asks his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am? Now, in our lives, a lot of people will talk about Jesus, write books about Jesus, will tell us about Jesus. It can be your mom, your, your family, a religion. And a lot of people say a lot of different things about who Jesus Christ is. But, and they say, some say John the Baptist, Elijah, one of the prophets. But then Jesus looks at them and says, Who do you say that I am? And this is where Peter answers. And he says, uh, Peter answers in, in the verse before this, in verse 16. He says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Say that with me. You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, how did he know that? This is the scripture that we're looking at. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood. Say flesh and blood. That's the natural world, the natural things. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. That's revelation knowledge. When you don't just get information from flesh and blood, but the Spirit of God, God Himself, begins to reveal to you who Jesus Christ is and also who you really are. So why are you sitting here today? Did somebody drag you to church? Are you here to please your parent or your spouse or someone else? Or are you getting a revelation that Jesus Christ is who He says He is? He is the Son of God. He was God who became flesh and dwelt among us. He is the Savior of the world. He is the one that the Bible says all things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the lot of men. He is God in the flesh. He is God, and He's still alive. Amen? They crucified Him on the cross, but the grave could not hold Him. That's what we believe. He is the Christ. Now, we've learned that the word Christ and Messiah is the same word. In the Old Testament, they use the word Messiah, used in Hebrew. In the Greek, in the New Testament, they, they're using the word Christ. It's the same thing. He could have said, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God, and it would have been proper. Amen? But flesh and blood is not what reveals these things to you. God will reveal God to you. And I told a story about how when I minister to an atheist or someone who says they don't believe in God, and, and I can't convince them that there's a God. Amen. What I do is I always talk to them. I say, you know what? If God's not big enough to reveal Himself to you, then don't serve Him. I put it on God. Amen. Come on, if God's not big enough and God's not real enough to reveal Himself to you, then you know what? Don't serve Him. But you need to seek to find out if He's real or not. I say, so why don't you ask God to reveal himself to you? Amen? If he's real. And so the atheists are not praying to a God they don't believe in to reveal himself to him. Do you all get it? And then I just back up. Whenever this person who didn't believe in God is now talking to God, all of a sudden you can, I can sense the presence of God come into that room where two agree. Anytime you gather together in the name of Jesus, there he is in the midst. And all of a sudden, they sense something and feel something, and something begins to happen to them that they've never experienced before. So whenever somebody says they're atheists, don't get mad at them. When I was in Guatemala, this one girl was doing that. She was there serving, and she claimed to be an atheist, but she was working harder than some of the Christians serving the orphans. And she came into the, what we call the gringo dorm, and she was crying and talking about how mean all of the Christians have been to her, telling her she's going to hell because she claimed to be an atheist instead of sharing the gospel with her. They judge people. Amen? I mean, last night Tony said grace with the men. He said, bless these sinners before they eat their dinners. Saints and sinners are welcome. Amen? Amen. He was, it was being funny, but, you know, we had already prayed, but he wanted to end the prayer with that. And we have a good time. Amen? It's, it's all right to have a good time. But, God, if we don't let sinners in, who's going to get saved? Right. Amen. Amen? And then who claims that they haven't sinned? You better read 1 John. 
If you say you have no sin, you don't only lie yourself, you, you're trying to make God a liar. That's what it says. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We know that. Amen? But when, when we get under the law, sin gets stronger. And what, I, what I've learned is, is people who are judging everyone else, they have a bunch of laws, but they just use them to judge everybody else. When there's laws that would judge them if they would get under the whole law. Y'all understand? I pick and choose the laws that I'm going to live by. The ones that I'm breaking, I say it's okay. The ones you're breaking, you're a bunch of sinners. So what we want to do is realize that Jesus Christ fulfilled the law, takes the law out of the way, comes to have a relationship with us to lead us into the truth. Amen. And you know what? When you're walking in love, you're keeping the law. All of it. So get, get in love. Fall in love with Jesus. Fall in love with one another. Walk in love. So again, the only way you get this revelation is by hearing God. How many of y'all believe you can actually hear God? Yeah. Now see, if you don't believe you can hear God, why would you even listen? You're not going to get any revelation that way. Go to Hebrews chapter 3. Let me find what I'm looking for here. At verse, uh, verse 7. Hebrews 3, 7. This is good. Father, in the name of Jesus, we know that you are the teacher. Holy Spirit, you teach through me. In my weakness, be made strong. Open the eyes of our heart. Bring revelation knowledge to us today, Lord God. Change our lives as we see you clearly. In Jesus' name, amen. It says, therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, who says? That's God. God's talking right here. As the Holy Spirit says, Today, say today, today, if you will hear His voice, if you'll hear His voice, you will change something in your life. Amen. And y'all hear me talk about this. If I start preaching law to you, say, listen, you're going to go to hell for smoking that. Well, that's not going to change your life. But one day if you go to light up something and the Holy Spirit says, today, I want you to put those down for me. Not for a religion, not to be a member of a church, not to be accepted by a pastor or whatever, but because the Holy Spirit speaks to you that day and you hear His voice, faith in that word He tells you is enough to overcome whatever He's asking you to overcome. Faith comes by hearing. When you hear God, guess what? If you still have your ear open, every time you're going to go to light up, the Holy Spirit's going to convict you. He's going to speak to you. And that's what He did with me. I would go to light my Marlboro and He says, one day I went to light it up and he said, do you love me more than these? He said, I'm left-handed, by the way. And I'd say, yeah, Lord. He says, well, so I'd get rid of it. Still have my pack, though, just in case I didn't throw the whole pack away. <laughs> then I have my cup of coffee. And how many know if, if you ever smoked, after, when you're having your cup, your cup of coffee, you like to have a cigarette with your cup of coffee? I'm making bear witness if you ever smoke before you yeah. or right after you eat. Or, you know, there are certain times it's, it's a habit, okay? And so when I was having my cup of coffee, I went to light it up. I wasn't even thinking about it. When I went to light it up, take a puff, was, uh, the Holy Spirit was there. Not the preacher. I didn't hear my preacher's voice. I didn't hear, you know, my, my spouse saying, or my mom. Or my, I heard the Holy Spirit say, do you love me more than these? And I'm like, Yeah. And it's like, well, if I keep smoking it, then that's not true. I mean, so if I say, yes, Lord, I love you, and I throw it away. And I kept doing that, and then I realized I'm just throwing away a bunch of cigarettes. Do you love me more than these? And then I got this revelation. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Wow. That, so the, God brought that. That's out of uh, uh, John chapter 14. So I realized... He commanded me, not the law, the voice of God said something to me. And I had a revelation, it was God speaking to me. So therefore, he said, every time you don't smoke, you're loving me more. You're, you're proving your love for me. You're showing your love for me because you're now obeying my command to you. Now see, that was after he'd done cleaned out a bunch of stuff. Whenever I first got saved, the last thing he was worried about was me smoking a, a Marlboro. <laughs> I had so much other junk going on in my life. Amen? 
single man, you know, just doing whatever I want, when I want, the way I want. And, and so he started dealing with me in all these other areas. But you know what? He'll continue to deal with you forever. Amen. Amen. As long as we're in this flesh and blood body, you still got some stuff God's dealing with. So you got to learn to hear his voice. So as a pastor, I'm not here to tell you what to eat, what to drink, what to smoke, where to go, and do all those kinds. I'm here to teach you how to hear the voice of God. So if you're ever going somewhere you're not supposed to go, it's not going to be me you're hearing. You're going to go to go in that place. You're going to hear the Holy Spirit says, do you love me more than that place? I don't want you to go in there. So now you're, you have a relationship with God. And you begin to have a revelation that God is after your best interest. He's not after you not having fun. Amen? And so usually when, you, when he's telling you to do something like, like that, you look back at it. And yeah, there is a law that kind of covers that. But you're not doing it because of a law. You're not doing it to become part of a group. You're doing it because you have a relationship with God. Amen. And that's where revelation knowledge comes from. It's when you finally get alone with God and you're talking to God and He's talking to you. Now, I know in the world and in psychology and psychiatry, they might say if you're hearing God's voice, you're deluded or you're, you're, you're schizophrenic or whatever. No, we're not talking about hearing voices in your head that tell you to do stupid stuff. When it's God, it's always going to line up with the Word of God. When He speaks to you, it's always going to line up with the Word of God. And He speaks to us in many different ways. He speaks to the way He loves to speak to you is in that still, small voice, in your conscience. When you got born again, you know what happened? All things became new. That old, hard conscience became soft again. And God pricks us and, and convicts us, not condemns us, in our conscience. So you begin to pay attention to that. Amen? You hear that still, small voice. And that's the sweetest way, I think the best way God likes to speak to us. But if we're not paying attention to that still, small voice, circumstances can begin to speak to us. Y'all know that? When He keeps telling you not to turn left, not to turn left, not to turn left, you keep turning left, and you find yourself in a ditch, the circumstance of being caught in the ditch is the consequence of not obeying God, and it can get your attention. And you say, you know what? God's been telling me not to turn left. I think I'm going to go straight today. And you, you see how simple this is? This is real simple. But a lot of people don't teach these kind of things. What they want to do is just teach a law, <laughs> condemn you, just preach the law at you. And then you, you walk out of here and you're like, there ain't no way I can do all that. What's the point? And it's true, you can't keep all of the law. But you can hear the voice of God, and in that word He speaks to you, faith's going to be in that word to overcome whatever it is you're dealing with. Amen? Amen. He wouldn't tell you to do something that He wouldn't give you the ability to do. Amen. So today, if we'll hear His voice, and he, he answers the rest of the day, He says, and do not harden. And He says, and do not harden your heart as in the rebellion. See, when we harden our heart from the voice of God, we get into rebellion, as in the days of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me and proved me and saw my works 40 years. In other words, you can see flesh and blood. You can watch all you want. That doesn't change your heart. You need to hear the voice of God. Amen. Flesh and blood does not reveal these things to you. But God in heaven begins to speak to you. Amen. And it takes faith to do that. Yes. You've got to believe. Amen. I'm not getting, getting what I'm saying today. And he says, Therefore I was angry with that generation and said, They go astray in what? Their heart. Keep your heart on God. Amen. And they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be any of you, uh, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of Unbelief departing from the living God. Unbelief, not believing, will keep you from receiving revelation knowledge. In other words, to get a revelation from God, you have to use your faith. It takes faith. Because faith goes beyond what flesh and blood can see. Go to 2 Corinthians with me. Chapter 4.
and verse 16. 416. When you get there, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now listen, to, therefore do not lose heart. Don't harden your heart. Don't lose heart. Keep your heart on God. Amen? Amen? Even though the outward man is perishing, the inward man is being renewed day by day. How many of y'all got the revelation that your outward man is perishing? It means you're getting older every day. Amen? Because this is a mortal body. It's apt to die. That's what the Bible teaches. Okay? He says, don't lose heart. Even though your outward man is perishing, your inward man is being renewed day by day. How many of y'all are renewing your inner man day by day? How do you do that? With the Word of God, in prayer, in serving God, in getting a revelation of who you are, what you have, and what you can do in Christ, and begin to do it, have the courage to do it, what God's calling you to do. He says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. In other words, while we're going through this earth experience, we're afflicted, but he says that's really a light affliction compared to the glory. He says, which is but for a moment, is working for us a more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So whatever you're going through, God is going to work that for His glory. Amen? Now look at the next part of this. He says, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. That's faith. If all you do is look at what you see, all you're going to do is see your circumstances. You're not going to see God working in it. And everything you see in this earth is temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. So when we talk about revelation knowledge, we're talking about seeing things that you cannot really see with your natural eyes. Peter did not know Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God, just by watching Him with His flesh and blood, watching all the miracles He did. Jesus said to Peter, you know this because my Father in heaven has revealed it to you. So my prayer for you is, Father in heaven, reveal yourself to every member of this church, every person in this community. Reveal yourself. Make yourself so real. Amen? Whenever I got born again, but well, let me say, before I got born again, I didn't realize that I, uh, there was a devil trying to destroy my life. I didn't realize there, there was a spiritual war going on. The minute I got born again, man, I, I entered into warfare. Amen? I mean, I, I thought people in my life would be excited about me being born again and, and not wanting to sin so much anymore. They, they were not excited about it because they were more interested in what religion I was going to instead of my relationship with Jesus Christ. They wanted me to be in a religion instead of a relationship. Now, you can be in a religion and have a relationship. Amen? Amen. But don't put your trust in man. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 17 says, if you put your trust in man, you're like a shrub in the wilderness. You know what that is? It, 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 a tumbleweed. Wherever the wind blows, that's where you go. He said, don't put your trust in the arm of the flesh, the strength of man or his arm. But he says, put your trust in God and you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. That even in the drought, you're going to still bear fruit. Amen. You'll still have green leaves on your tree. So you've got to put your trust in God. I want you to learn that revelation knowledge will change your life. And the only way you get that is by having encounters with God. Amen. By, by praising God. How I many you know that even though you don't feel like praising, you need to praise? Amen. See, one of the men last night at the men's supper, he said, you know what? The devil wants to take your joy away. He wants to take your praise away. And if he sees he can take your praise away, whatever he's doing to take your praise away, he's going to keep working in that area. So praise God anyway. Amen. And another man said, Dad, that's when it becomes a sacrifice. And the Bible talks about a sacrifice of praise. So I love to hear them speaking back to me what's been being taught and what the Bible says. And they're living it and it's changing their lives. Because they got a revelation. Whenever something bad happens to you, the temptation is to have despair and have depression come upon you. When God says, try to respond back to Him with praise, rejoice always. And again, I say rejoice. See, when you got a revelation of that, you're going to realize that whenever things start going wrong and you start rejoicing, then things change. Amen? Amen? The praises go up and God's blessings come down. 
Go with me to uh, Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Hosea 4, 6. Very interesting scripture. It says, my people, that's us, right? That's God's people. He's not talking to the sinners of the lost world. He's talking to his people. My people are destroyed for a lack of what? He doesn't say they're destroyed because of demons. He doesn't say they're destroyed because of other people. He says they're destroyed because they have a lack of knowledge. When you get a revelation of who you are, what you have and what you can do, you're going to realize that you've got authority over the devil, so you can't keep saying, the devil, the devil, the devil. He's defeated, defeated, defeated. You got it? And you get a revelation that you have authority over all the power of the enemy. And then you also get a revelation that whenever you're born again, that all things become new and now all things are of God. So whatever's going on in your life, God is probably involved in it. And don't give the devil that much credit. But there is a devil, and it says be watchful, be vigilant, walk by faith. Amen? Resist him steadfastly in the faith. But you know what? The reason we're not overcoming these things is because we don't have revelation of who we are. I am an ambassador of Christ in the earth. I represent a king and a kingdom that's greater than anything in this world. And his word is in my mouth and the word of his power created everything. So when I'm speaking his word as an ambassador of him, guess what? Things are going to change. Things are going to happen. But you've got to get a revelation of who you are. Do you really have a revelation from God? Do you really know from God the Father that if you die right now, you're going to heaven? Or you just convince yourself of that? Or you really know God has said, you're my son, you're my daughter. You're not lost anymore. You've been found. Amen? And he loves you so much that even if you mess up, he says all you got to do is confess your sin. He's faithful and just to forgive your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He says if you walk in the light as he is in the light and have fellowship with one another, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all sin. Say all sin. Wow, what a promise. (laughs) But you got to have a revelation that he loves you that much. So he says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge. He says, I also have rejected you from being priest for me. How many know in the New Testament we're all kings and priests? Because you have forgotten the law of God or the word of God, I also will forget your children. Do you realize that as parents, when we start rejecting God, rejecting the knowledge of God, it's going to affect our children too? That's why a lot of people, their, their lives don't change until they have a baby. I've seen that many times. This young man, young lady, just going about their life, sowing their wild oats, all of a sudden, bam, baby comes into their life. It's like, well, you know, and, and be, depending on your tradition, they say, well, we've got to get that baby baptized in case that baby dies, they're going to go to heaven. Let me tell you all something. Parents, you better walk with Jesus Christ in front of them. Because if you don't, they won't. And it doesn't matter if you baptized them or not or dedicated them or not. If it's just a little religious action you just did this morning and not a real commitment to ask God to help you raise them, it's not going to change anything. The way the Bible teaches us is what's going on in the parents. The covenant I have with God is what goes down to my children. If I have a covenant with God, my children are under that covenant. Even when they're in the womb, they're under that covenant. I mean, we know with Jesus and John, they they were communicating in the womb. They had names before they were born. They were under covenant. But yet, they still dedicated Jesus at the temple. And then Jesus got baptized later. Because there's disciples who still want to follow and do what the sacraments say. Amen? Because every time we do that, it should be changing us. We should be learning more about who he is. See, do you really have a revelation of what's happening whenever you're getting baptized? Most people, when they get baptized, they don't have a full revelation of what's going on. For the rest of your life, you're going to be learning about what happened when you went into the water. So some people come and say, I was baptized. And I said, did you really believe? Yes, I did, but I didn't fully understand. Nobody fully understood when they were baptized. Amen? 
So you continue to grow in the revelation of what happened to you when you were baptized. Each of the sacraments, you need a revelation of what's going on when we have communion. I try to teach about it, talk about it, but you need to get a revelation that when you take that bread, there's healing promised you for your body. When you take that cup, there's restoration and forgiveness of your sin. It's again a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And He meets us there at the communion table. And we do it together as a body, which strengthens us. Isn't that powerful? But we don't want to reject the knowledge because when we reject it, it's going to affect not only us, but our children. Amen? And I always talk about the law. And I'm not, when I talk about the law, when I first went to church and somebody was talking about the law, I actually thought they were talking about the police laws and the laws of the land. We're talking about the laws of the Scripture. The Mosaic law. You all understand what I'm talking about? If, whenever you raise your children, if all you do is preach at them rules and laws and not teach them to have a, rev a revelation or a relationship with Jesus Christ, the minute they get old enough, they're going to go out and test if breaking the law is going to work or not. But when they're not in your presence and they're out there doing something wrong and the Holy Spirit speaks to them, that's a whole different story. Amen? We've got to teach them to hear the voice of God too. Revelation knowledge. Amen? You can tell a young person, you need to keep yourself until you get married. Stay pure until you get married. Well, golly, in this world, it seems like it's almost an impossible thing unless that son or that daughter gets a revelation from God about that. You can say it until you turn green, purple, whatever. But it, once they get a revelation from God, whenever they're out there and something's about to happen, the Holy Spirit's going to be right there because they know God. And the young man ought to do like Joseph, grab his... You know, he forgot his coat. He just ran. He just took off. He should have grabbed the coat. He got in trouble leaving his coat behind. Some of y'all know the story. So that's where we get revelation knowledge from, is having a true relationship with God. Amen? Amen. Go with me to uh, Proverbs 29.18. Proverbs 29.18. There it is. Where there is no revelation, and we're talking about revelation knowledge or prophetic vision, when we have no revelation, the people cast off restraint. In other words, when God speaks to you, that begins to restrain you. Y'all got, got that? When you're not hearing God, you just do whatever you want when you want the way you want. But when you get a revelation from God, He starts speaking to you, all of a sudden that word's got a hold of you. And then it will restrain you. See, when you get a revelation, I was talking about purity as a young man or a young woman. When you got a revelation about that, you're not going to put yourself in a situation to where you're going to end up in sexual immorality. It's going to begin to restrain you. It's going to begin to, to make you decide, well, I'm not going to go with this boy or this girl because all they're after is this or that. They're just worldly. They're not a Christian. Come on, young people, don't be unequally yoked with the world. If that person is not interested in your soul, they're only interested in a physical relationship with you, they, really, they, they don't really love you. They lust you. Somebody say amen. amen. Y'all act like I'm actually preaching to y'all right now. I'm preaching better than y'all say amen about some of that. And some of us older people, we'd love to tell you how, how our life went because we didn't have a revelation from God. We didn't have somebody tell us what I'm telling you. Amen. Amen. And, and I can't say sometimes when you're about to do something you're not supposed to do and you, you, you've heard me preach it and God's speaking to you, His voice might sound a little bit like mine. <laughs> or like mama's. Or like daddy's. That's when you stop me, step back and say, God, is that you? And when He says, yes, say, I'm not listening to you. No, he says, okay, God. With every temptation, God makes a way of escape. All of these are promises, practical ways of living and getting through the journey of this life without being destroyed in this life and also affecting and changing other people's lives at the same time. He says, so where there is no revelation knowledge, where there's no revelation, people cast off restraint. But narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. So people that are going through this narrow gate and this way that seems difficult, they're hearing God. 
Broad is the way, and many go in there by that's going to be destroyed. Because we don't want to hear God. We'll listen to everybody else. Go with me. We're going to uh, close, begin to close right here. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8. When we get revelation knowledge from God, the scripture comes alive, guys. That things will, will just amaze you. Interpreting scripture with scripture instead of just religiously interpreting it will change your life. Isaiah 55, verse 8. Let's, let's start with verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he, the Lord, will have mercy on him and to our God, for he abundantly pardons. I've been pardoned. Amen. I'm seeking God. I was seeking God. I want to continue to seek God. I'm going to turn. I want to get rid of my unrighteous thinking, my wicked thinking, and I want to think the way God wants me to think. And listen to what he says. In verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God's ways and God's thoughts are higher than us. Amen. And the only way to get those is to believe upon and begin to hear him so that he can change your thinking and change your behavior. Now, Wednesday night, we really broke this down and went into some things. And if you weren't here, I would I recommend you get that teaching or watch it online or whatever. I opened up the scripture to teach that there's so many different levels of understanding when you get revelation of what the scripture says. Do you know that God created the heavens and the earth? Genesis 1. And the earth was without form and was void and darkness was on the face of the, the deep. But guess what? As the old creation, as the Adamic man... My, my thinking was, was, was wicked. My behavior was wicked. But then God says that first heaven and first earth is going to pass away. And he's going to give me a new heaven and a new earth. Guess what? We know that's going to happen in the natural. He is going to let a city come down out of heaven. But he says until then, the bride is that city that has come out of heaven. And he's already made all things new. And we're supposed to have heavenly thoughts that come from God and live an earthly life that comes from God. So we already have a down payment of the new heaven and new earth right now. And if you want to get a good understanding of that, get the tape from Wednesday night. We broke that down so beautiful. Okay, so when you get to the book of Revelation, chapter 21, it's not just talking about the end of time. It's also talking about what happened to you when you got born again. No more tears, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more death. To a certain degree, when you are born again, you are not going to die like everybody else. Just your physical body dies, you do not die. Amen. We don't cry like everybody else cries because we, cry. we, we may sorrow, but we do it in hope. Because we know what God has for us. It's a down payment by His Spirit that's already working in us. So right now we need to realize that God, by revelation right now, only the Holy Spirit can teach you this. You need to realize that there's a new heaven and a new earth that wants to come upon you right now. A new way of thinking and a new way of behaving right now. Not waiting until you die to do it, but getting a hold of it right now and living it before the whole world. That we are the church, we are the bride, we are the city set on a hill, we are the light of the earth. The light of the world. And we begin to live that now. And so now when y'all start reading about the new heaven and new earth, don't just think about the, the, the by and by later on. Start thinking about what he's doing in you right now. He says, behold, I make all things new in Revelation 21. He says, it is done when he was on the cross. When he said, it is finished, it was done. The new heaven and new earth is available for all of us right now. And then one day we will put off this flesh and blood. And we will have an immortal body in a place that is called heaven, that, that is going to be a, a, the city of Jerusalem that God's prepared for all those that love him. Amen. But until then, let's have a little down payment of it working in us right now. So yeah, his thoughts are harder than my thoughts. But he says, I have not seen, ears not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. 
He's not hiding it from us. He's hiding it for us. And whoever seeks Him can have that revelation and begin to live in that new heaven and new earth right now as a down payment of the Holy Spirit in our lives. How many are kind of getting that? Woo, it gets you excited. All of a sudden you're going to realize who you are, what you have, and what you can do when you start changing your thinking. Quit limiting God and yourself with your wrong, low thinking. Let me keep reading this just because this is so good. 10 and 11 of this chapter. For as the rain comes down and snow from heaven and does not return there, but water the earth and makes it bring forth in bud. How many of y'all want to bring forth fruit? He said, you did not choose me, but I chose you that you might bear fruit and that my fruit would remain. He's raining on us his word. He's giving us his word so that we can bear fruit for him. That it might give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. That's all you need. If you've got seed to sow, you can prosper. Amen? Don't eat your seed. Plant your seed. Eat your bread. Let it grow. And when the harvest comes, take some seed to plant and get you some bread to eat. Next thing you know, your acorn becomes a forest. You plant one acorn, it becomes an oak tree. The oak tree has millions of acorns. Then you can plant a whole forest with one seed if you do it right. But if you eat your acorn, that's it. Promise of prosperity. But ultimately, you know what he's saying? The one seed that's brought life to all is Jesus Christ. The seed of David, the seed of Abraham, the seed of God who came and died and was planted. One seed, and now look at how much harvest is in the earth today. I work for the most amazing organization. We got outlets all over the world. Amen? Amen. It's called the church. We take care of orphans. We take care of widows. We feed the poor. Amen? All over the world. We're connected to a worldwide organization. So when somebody says, what you do for a living, I don't want to just say, uh, I'm a pastor. No, I belong to the, one of the grandest, most amazing organization, organisms that's ever been on the planet Earth. We have outlets all over where lives can be changed. And we are supposed to be part of that grand church. And when we go out of here, let me tell you, it's not about you just going back to your house and watching TV and eating, drinking, be merry. It's about going out there and understand that you've got the greatest seed of all and it's to be sown into the hearts of men and women that you meet and it will bring forth life and bring forth a harvest unto God. Because right here, as we end this right here, it says, listen. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. But it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper. Say prosper. In the thing for which I sent it. It's prospering in me. How about you? I'm getting a little taste of that new heaven and new earth today. 